Live from WROC, this is News 8 at Sunrise. Good morning. We begin with breaking news. Rochester-based film giant Kodak files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The company filing those documents just after midnight in U.S. Bankruptcy Court, Southern District of New York, just a week before Kodak was due to release its fourth quarter results. Kodak says the move will help ensure its future as a, quote, profitable and sustainable enterprise. News Day's Sierra Putman joining us now live from State Street, the headquarters of Kodak, with the latest developments. Good morning, Sierra. Good morning, Matt. Now, we all knew that this was a possibility that Kodak could be filing for bankruptcy. Here at News 8, we've been reporting that Kodak was just weeks away from filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. And just after midnight, the news finally came down that the company finally filed for bankruptcy protection. This is the plan Kodak has moving forward. They have a new chief restructuring officer to help it navigate through Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Dominic Dinopoli of FTI Consulting will take the job. The company also secured $950 million from Citigroup to help keep it afloat. The lead up to this day has put a lot of strain on Kodak workers and retirees. Many of them are worrying about what this will mean for their jobs and retirement benefits. On its just launched restructuring website, Kodak says it will continue to provide employees with their usual wages and benefits. It says the filing should not disrupt obligations to supplier, suppliers and it will continue customer programs. What everyone should expect from Kodak is business as usual. Business as usual for our international operations, which were not part of the filing, and business as usual for our U.S. subsidiaries, because the Chapter 11 process enables that. And employees will continue to receive their usual wages, health care coverage, vacation, and other benefits without interruption. Now, as I said before, Kodak has just launched a restructuring website. You can go to Kodak transforms.com on that website you will see the entire um, full version of CEO Antonio Perez's video statement the bankruptcy filing and much more about this bankruptcy reporting live in Rochester Sierra Putman News 8. Sierra thank you very much. For most of the last century Kodak has been a mainstay not only here in Rochester but as part of the American culture. News 8's Maureen McGuire takes a look at the company's past present and future. George Eastman's resting place is at Kodak Park, once the largest industrial complex in the Northeast U.S. Today, it's known as Eastman Business Park. Over the past five years, the company has demolished dozens of buildings and leased out remaining space. Though thousands of employees still work there, Kodak itself is on the brink. Eighty years after Eastman's death, the company he founded is struggling. <laughs> For Western New Yorkers, it's a painful change of fortune. Thanks to Kodak, Rochester became a world-class small city. Kodak put photography in the hands of amateurs, from the Brownie camera to the Instamatic. Memories were shot on Kodak cameras and processed on Kodak film. Rochesterians made the cameras and the film and processed the prints, too. You get each new scene correctly exposed with a brownie automatic. The stunning because... success played out over an entire century. The iconic brand known not just for its cameras. Take one, take two, take three, take four flash pictures without changing bulbs. But it's commercials too. But in 2009, the last Kodachrome pictures were printed as the focus turned to digital. People are now more likely to share vacation photos on Facebook and cell phones than those old slide carousels that dominated the 60s and 70s. And while Kodak invented the digital camera in 1976, technology writers say the company failed to keep pace with the digital revolution and international competition from Fuji. It continued to aggressively market its film business, only to find by the late 90s the film business had dried up. Back in the 80s, when times were still good, Kodak employed 60,000 people in Rochester alone, 20,000 plus here at the former Elm Grove plant in Gates. A little over a decade ago, Elm Grove was shuttered, and now Kodak employs just 20,000 worldwide. 
In the past year, Kodak has put renewed emphasis on digital printing. It continues to roll out new products, pouring millions into new printers, high-speed presses, and digital cameras. But it needs extra funds and fast, so it's mining a treasure trove of intellectual property that analysts think could fetch up to $3 billion. To raise cash, it's selling those lucrative patents. To raise confidence, it's undergoing an internal reorganization. But it remains to be seen whether the new year will bring in new hope. 132 years after George Eastman founded Kodak, some worry Kodak's picture is fading to black. Maureen McGuire, News 8. I want to bring in now CBS Money Watch correspondent Ashley Morrison, and we're going to continue our discussion this morning of Kodak. Ashley joining us from New York this morning. Ashley, thanks for being with us. Good morning, Team Matt. Let me start with what typically happens. We see a filing like this happening just after midnight before the markets open. What typically happens when the markets open up and this filing is now out there? Well, since officially filing, shares of Kodak actually plunged more than 30 percent at the beginning of the month. You'll remember Moody's cut ratings on about a billion dollars of Kodak debt with a negative outlook and cited a heightened probability of bankruptcy over the near term. We've been talking about this for some time. We knew this was coming as liquidity deteriorates. Now, the move comes after the company failed to find a buyer for its digital imaging patents. Kodak said back in November that it could run out of cash in a year if it didn't sell those patents, and it had hoped that it would bring in billions of dollars when that happened. Of course, we know now that did not happen. Uh, again, Kodak has plunged uh, about 30 percent, 32 percent at this point since announcing that it is officially filed for bankruptcy. And Ashley, what's the impact for investors both today and long term? This, the stock price has been under a dollar for more than a month now. What are we looking at for investors here? Well, Kodak has announced that it's obtained a $950 million line of credit from Citigroup as it reorganizes its business. Again, that still has to be approved in court, but that is giving it some hope. On its website, Kodak is assuring that it will be able to pay its vendors, suppliers, and other business partners in full for goods and services going forward. Now, the bankruptcy filing does not involve Kodak's international operations either, so that's important to keep that in mind as we are looking at this from uh, an investor's standpoint. What about the timing of all this? One week before we're expecting the fourth quarter results from the company, what does that say here? Well, we haven't seen very good results from Kodak. Uh, they haven't even posted a, uh, an annual profit since 2007. So um, certainly there's got to be some movement one way or the other. Analysts uh, do say that the company has invested huge sums in new lines of inkjet printers that are finally expected to start turning a profit very soon. So the outlook going forward when they do post fourth quarter results will be what many investors are looking for. We know what we are uh, doing right now with Kodak going forward uh, with this uh, information. They're hoping that we're going to have a more positive outlook for them. Yeah, a lot of people hopeful that this is a low point and a turnaround for the company as they move forward. Right. Ashley Morrison from CBS Money Watch in New York. Ashley, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thank you. News of Kodak's bankruptcy filing has the company's retiree association assuring its members this morning. Equus president says the group is saddened by the news, but it is prepared to fight for retirees and their interests during the Chapter 11 filing. President Bob Volpe issued a statement this morning saying, quote, it is our intention and our members expect us to lead and to be their advocates in any way that will protect their pension and benefits. I want to assure retirees and their families that ECRA will work diligently with its own attorneys as well as advisors from the National Retirees Legislative Network to stand up for the interests of retirees in bankruptcy proceedings, end quote. ECRA now plans to file notice with the Office of the U.S. Trustee to be appointed to the company's Committee of Unsecured Creditors. Kodak cannot make any benefit changes until the Company of Unsecured Creditors is appointed, and ECRA has had the opportunity to discuss the claim with the company. Let's switch gears for you now. Get a check of your morning forecast with the lovely Stacy Pengen. Good morning, Stacy. Why, thank you, lovely Matt Malloy. <laughs> 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 a typical start for January here in western New York. 18 degrees out at the airport under a mostly cloudy sky, a southerly breeze at 7 miles an hour. But that is going to be ramping up thanks to a rather strong cold front that's going to be swinging through a little bit later in the day today, bringing us some snow. 
and also some pretty gusty winds at times. Check out temperatures right now around the region. 18 degrees here in Rochester, a little bit milder off to our north at 25 in Trenton and milder off to our west as well. Cleveland sitting at 25. So our temperatures are actually going to be going up in the next few hours and also, of course, through the rest of the day. We'll take you through the rest of the day, at least on Futurecast. Some sun to start, but clouds will quickly overspread the region. By the time we head into the early to mid afternoon, we've got that cold front swinging through a quick burst of snow likely, and it's going to come right during your drive time. So we actually have a winter weather advisory in effect for portions of the viewing area for blowing and drifting snow. Not a whole lot of snow in the forecast. It's all about the timing. We're talking about a general coating to probably an inch or two uh, again during your drive, and that's through the afternoon. It's going to be turning windy. Temperatures now in the teens will make it into the low 30s. Heading into the overnight, a little bit of lake effect snow, especially to the southwest and off to the northeast near the Lake Ontario shoreline. Turning chilly, we'll fall back into the mid-teens. Next three days here on Friday, it's just going to stay cold in the teens and low 20s throughout the day. A few lake effect snow showers lingering in the morning, and then we'll see some afternoon sun. On Saturday, hey, it's winter, and we're looking at another <laughs> chance of some snow, an area-wide snow. Right now, we're looking at a probably a general two to four inches, but of course we'll tweak that as needed and we'll stay in the upper 20s during the day on Saturday. The highs aren't that bad, but the lows are pretty darn cold. You know, they are, but they're seasonable. Right. We've just been so darn spoiled this winter that we really have. normal what, though, seems cold. Remote starter, first thing in the morning, best invention ever. Smart man. I'm with you. Have a garage, but I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy, thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> it is 611, 16 degrees. Coming up, a look back at some snapshots in Kodak's history. That is next on News 8 at Sunrise. You're watching the team you can trust, Katrina Irwin, and Rochester's most accurate forecast with meteorologist John DePasquale. This is News 8 at Sunrise.